Sorry, it took me a second to try to remember that. Um, on my first video, I just did a, you know, I was out camping. It was cold. Uh, I haven't made a video in a little while. I've uh, been kind of busy. Uh, I am a long-haul truck driver, and we are indeed inside my truck. Uh, I'd pan the camera around, but eh, it's a little bit messy in here. I don't really want to show that. But anyway, um, I wanted to do something kind of... Well, you see a lot of them on on YouTube, but I wanted to do my own version of it. Um, the uh, they they refer to these ten C's, but it's a little hard to remember at times because they have to make everything start with C. Like for example, what you see in front of your knives. So that would be cutting tools. Oh, get the cutting tool. Sorry, that was a terrible Sylvester, or uh, damn it, <laughs> that was a terrible Schwarzenegger impersonation. Give me the cutting tool. Uh, but anyway, uh, I, what you see in front of you are of various different kinds. And from a bushcraft standpoint or survival standpoint, some of these are not exactly ones you would want to use, uh, especially the, uh, the folders here in the front. That's more of a uh, pocket utility I guess but I just wanted to show a few of the knives that I have here uh, this is a Benchmade Freak uh, they, they call it the Super Freak it is the M4 Steel and uh, this was actually the first one I bought the first Benchmade uh, I do love this knife but I wouldn't necessarily put it through any kind of extreme wear because it's it is expensive uh, then of course we got the bench made bug out uh, this is the CF elite it is uh, s30b and I cannot get that will not yeah they don't want to zoom but that is what happens when it's on my phone uh, I do have a laptop, I do have a GoPro, but I don't have the uh, the software right now to do the video editing. I do have a small one on my phone. If you've watched my first episode, you would notice that I did do some editing, but not very much. I'm old school. Uh, I don't know the first thing about video editing, so I'm learning as I go. Uh, then, of course, this knife is the... Uh, a little bit harder to open. This is the bench made proper. Again, that's 30 v steel. There is no lock on this thing. It is the double detent. Uh, I do like this knife, uh, and it is really sharp. I had to uh, my tarp on my one of my. Uh, it's like a garage building kind of thing. It's uh, in pieces. It's a kit, and I had to tarp it, and it destroyed. It had some sharp edges on it, destroyed my tarp. So I had to stop on the side of the highway, and I actually used this to slice off uh, a large portion of the tarp that was just shredded, flapping in the wind. And... Okay, this is a uh, Kalashnikov, the Boker. Uh, it is a automatic. Uh, look at the blade shape. That is interesting sort of a Tonto Kukri, I guess. I don't know exactly what you want to call it. Um, and then, let me do this with my right hand. 
I am right-handed. Uh, this is a Civivi Elementum D2 blade steel wood handle. Uh, it's a special kind of wood. Starts with a G. I have absolutely no idea what it is. Um, uh, this is my favorite of the uh, grown man fidget spinners. A real man's fidget spinner. Yeah. I'll just drive down the road and do this all day long. And then the newest one in my collection. I absolutely love this thing. This is called the CRKT Ritual. Now, when I first saw this, I couldn't remember the name of what this blade is. And then I, it, it popped in my head. And it says to me, Scimitar. See, it has that Arabian sort of look to it. But that is the CRKT ritual. And it is a uh, Fultz. I think his name was Dan Fultz. This is not usually a design he does. So this is completely out of the norm for him. But this is a beautiful knife. This is a 12C27 Sandvik steel, which is a Swedish steel. Uh, it's a really good um, stainless steel. Uh, in fact, your Mora knives are made out of the same thing. So, But I would say if you're going to go backpacking or you're going to go hiking for a dura you know a decent duration camping in the woods bushcraft whatever it probably would not be a bad idea to keep a pocket knife with you because they can actually serve a purpose out in the woods i wouldn't but you know you definitely don't want to baton with these now there is a video where these i think they're british or australian i don't know but there's two of them they play around in the woods and they actually took this, this this exact one. Well, not this, not mine, not this exact one. But they took this type of knife, this uh, M4 steel Benchmade Freak, and they put it to its test. They were actually batoning wood with this. They were throwing it like a throwing knife, uh, beating it through things, you know. And it actually survived. So. This knife might be tougher than you think it is, but still, this is a lot of money. So, I don't think that's necessarily something you want to do with this particular knife. Alright, so it's probably a good idea to keep a nice pocket knife when you go out, but not for every task. So, I'm just going to move these off to the side here now, so we can get to the other one. Okay, now this knife, this is a this is a hunting knife. Okay, this is called the uh, Hidden Canyon. No. I don't remember what it is now. But it is the hunting knife made by Benchmade. Um, but this is the skinning knife. Um, you could still use it as a hunting knife. Um, I don't remember the exact size of the blade, but I think I think it's 4.25 inches. So it's it's a it's a pretty good size blade. It's a S30V steel. Uh, it has jimping up here. You know, if you've got smaller hands, this might be a problem to get to. But I don't have small hands. This knife is over nine inches in length. So if that gives you any kind of indication, the size of my hand. Uh, but I mean, I can hit that. 
I can hit that jimping no problem bury my thumb in this groove right here and I'm good to go uh, if I absolutely had to I could probably use this for some bushcraft type stuff because again it is S30V which is a, a fairly tough steel uh, it is stainless uh, and I you know it's it is full tang that's an interesting design right there but it is full tang so if I absolutely had to use it as as if this was the only thing I had I could probably use this for bushcraft to be completely fine and it comes with a nice it's a decent leather sheath uh, more of the suede side on the leather rather than uh, like a completely smooth like this one right here this is my condor bush lore this is the nice shiny soft side of the leather this is more of the suede type side uh, but it's again not bad it actually has a plastic uh, in here to keep this from collapsing and uh, it's pretty nice I like this knife I got this in a trade from one of my buddies so I'll set that to the side okay now the condor bush lore this is actually uh, fire tender this is the 550 cord or paratender I'm sorry paratender um, actually has the yeah you see that red stuff in there that is actually waxed jute twine sorry my fingernails are dirty but I have a job where I get dirty and I work with my hands so it happens um, this is a, a waxed jute twine and uh, the stuff is fairly flammable you can pull it out fluff it up all right but anyway okay now I want to talk about both of these knives together so I'm gonna lay this one out here okay now this is not necessarily a review I have used the bush lore here uh, one time out in the woods and that was actually that day that I went camping in the, with the cold so uh, I'm not really giving a review on this one yet because I haven't used it enough but for what I have used it for it's worked pretty well this is a new one I actually just got not long ago this is called the uh, this is the Fieldcraft 3.5 it is the Brothers of Bushcraft made by Topps Knives it is the Fieldcraft 3.5 uh, this is the 1095 high carbon steel. This knife is made in the United States, which is awesome. Uh, this is 1075. Uh, black walnut handles. I absolutely love walnut handles. Um, and this is made in uh, El Salvador, which I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with that one bit. Condor is a really nice knife. They've been around for a very long time. And uh, they've never skimped out on their quality. So, But the main difference, 1075, 1095. Now, you may be wondering what the difference between the two. Okay, 1095 is going to hold an edge a little bit better. But this is going to take more abuse. So this one's tougher, harder to sharpen doesn't hold a, or no I mean I'm sorry it's tougher and it's gonna to have to be sharpened more often this one is I mean they're still durable 1095 is a good steel they're both very durable steels this one's a little bit tougher than this one but this one's gonna hold an edge better so it's all in what you want to do with it now price wise I paid 140 for this one I don't necessarily know if that was uh, too much. Um, I mean, if you compare it to like Amazon prices, it was. But I bought it in a mom and pop shop. Uh, it's actually a knife store off of I-40. I believe it's exit 294 in Arizona. Really nice knife shop. Really nice guys. Really, you know, really nice people in that store. So if you happen to run through I-40 and uh, Arizona to uh, exit 294 uh, it's called Knife City 
really nice place, nice people. So I, you know, I spent the money. I like supporting, you know, small businesses. So that's what I did. Uh, this is the smaller version of this knife. Uh, the actual field craft, I believe, is a four and a half inch blade. Um, much bigger, and it, it'll have that little spot here on the back for f striking the fire steel. But I didn't buy this knife for the purpose of striking a fire steel because this knife here does a perfect job of that. That spine on that knife is very sharp. So it'll do that task. This, I got it for the bow drill here, or bow drill socket, whatever you want to call it. Um, and something a little bit more of an upgrade from this. Let me grab it here. Now, I like Mamora knives. I have this one. And... I have this one. Oh, let me, I'm going to lean this up against here like this so that that flash doesn't hit the... Okay, this is the Mora Companion. Uh, it is uh, stainless steel. I've used, I've used it quite a bit. I do like this knife. Uh, I'm not going to get rid of it. But I wanted something... I wanted something a little bit more durable than, than these. I still use them. I'm still going to use them. Uh, but I wanted something a little bit, a little bit tougher, a little bit, you know, better upgrade. Because uh, I'm going to be carrying this knife and this knife. And these will be my main two bushcraft knives. Um, I have actually not gotten to use this one at all. And uh, if you can, this. The camera on this phone really I mean it's a good it's a good phone it's the uh, Galaxy Note 10 Plus so it's a good phone it's a good camera but it's it's not a you know it's not a camera camera you know like my GoPro would be doing so much better on this but if you can see the patina on here, I gave this a patina. I first coated this blade in mustard. Uh, did that a couple of times to, to get a rough patina on it. And then I soaked it in uh, apple cider vinegar for about two hours. And that was the final product. I'm not, not done. I want to do a little bit more to it. Get, you know little bit darker but I haven't really used this knife yet uh, I bought this at Smoky Mountain Knife Works in Sevierville Tennessee I do like this knife I'm gonna I'm gonna take it out and put it to use uh, this is the carbon steel blade which should be obvious because you're not gonna put a patina on stainless like this one here uh, but I wanted something a little bit more durable. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take, you know, the the mores out with me whenever I go camping. But it's like my main bug out bag. I'm gonna have these two knives with me. All right. So, oh, and then the, of course the sheath here. I've got some uh, gorilla tape and paracord wrapped around it, so I have a nice little hank of paracord just in case. All right. And these, this is, uh, this stainless steel Mora knife is, uh, the 12C27 Sandvik Swedish steel. Just like the, uh, the Ritual. Um, now this Mora, this, this knife, there, this Mora knife here, I've had it for a couple of months. Uh, it's, you know. But I thought it would be nice to have. Okay, now let me put the bush lore away. And what I like about this Brothers of Bushcraft knife is it comes with 
with this. Now the full size one will have a ferrule rod attachment right here. Uh, but again, this is the Fieldcraft 3.5. I wanted something a little bit smaller. I could do smaller tasks with. But that's what it came with. And of course, it's got the the clip on the back. So I have it set up so I can scout carry it. Which I think is pretty cool. So, alright. Now, I want to talk about... Now, I have a really big... I have a really big knife uh, on my pistol belt. Uh, it's a Schrade SCHF 39. Um, I absolutely love that knife. Uh, that's my bruiser. I use that knife to, I'll, I, I think the largest log I've batoned with it to date was about four, about four and a quarter diameter. Uh, it was a, it was a tough go. Um, but I was able to, to finally baton all the way through it. So that knife I keep around. And it's like 30. I think it's like a $37 knife. Uh, thick quarter inch. Uh, quarter inch thick. Full tang. Um, 1095 high carbon. Really good knife. I mean it, it's. And it's sharp. Not, not shave sharp. But it's sharp enough to do. What I what I do with it, and I can still feather stick with it if necessary. So technically, that's the one that I have. But you know, as with anything else that has a really low price tag on it, it may eventually come to an end. So I do have these other things uh, as backups. Um, usually, I keep this in my SOG. This you know this the bush lure here. I usually keep it in my SOG uh, backpack. Um, it's my, basically my get home bag, but I'm a long haul truck driver, so it's essentially my get back to the truck bag. Well, sort of the same thing, but this is what I keep in that one. And I'm thinking about putting that bushcraft knife in my Maxpedition VersaPack, uh, which is a later video. But anyway, this one's getting about 22 minutes. I want to end this one within a few minutes. Um, this is a K-Bar. Um, this is a... Uh, these are tactical knives. Um, this is the USMC uh, version of the K-Bar. These are made in Oleon, New York. This is Crow Van 1095 steel, uh, which is an excellent steel. This is stacked leather handle. Uh, it is not a full tang. Uh, it, now I may be I may be wrong, but the knife stock narrows out as it goes through the handle until you get about right here, and then it becomes real thin like this so whether you want to use something like this for bushcraft purposes it may be advisable maybe not uh, I have heard stories that Marines have used this knife as their sole survival knife for decades they'll baton with it they'll do everything else with it and they've never really had any major problems good thing about K-Bar is, is it has like a craftsman guarantee. You break that thing and uh, you just send it back to them. Most of the time they'll replace it for free. Or they'll fix it and send it back to you. Depending on what you do to it. Uh, and of course it has it comes with a Kydex sheath. Uh, you can get all the necessary gear for it. Uh, this is a belt loop right here. Or you can attach it to something else as a dangler. So, pretty nice. Uh, of course, I keep it for the tactical purposes of it. I don't necessarily know if I'm going to try to chop a tree down with it, but you never know. When you absolutely need it, 
this may be the best thing you'll ever have. Who knows? All right. So, uh... Oh, there is one more I'll throw in here. Uh, just for the hell of it. Uh, this knife I've had for almost 20 years. I used to... I bought one and absolutely loved it. So I bought a pair. And then I realized it had its own folding variant. So I bought two of those. But over the years, one of the big ones disappeared. I think it was probably stolen. And the two folders disappeared. Probably stolen. This is the only one I have left. That, my friends, is a kukri. It is a very big kukri. Very big. I think the total length of this knife is around 15 and a half inches in length. Uh, this is like a micarta. I think micarta handle. Or maybe G10. But again, this is like a 20 year old knife. So, this would have been like an early version of it. But it's got a nice texture to it. Uh, it is star bits held together. It is full tang all the way through. Uh, now, I don't know the steel. It says it's stainless. So, it may be like a 420, 440. Uh, it is made by United Cutlery. This is the... I don't know if you can read that but it says u.s army ranger association rangers lead the way so it is the usara kukri made by united cutlery the model number is uc1442 uh, it is discontinued has been for a long time uh, i wouldn't even know where to get another one of these if i wanted to but uh i've had them I've had them for years. Um, this one was actually the one that I left in its sheath for most of that 20 years. I never used it. Not for a single thing. The other one, I did. I actually took it out and chopped stuff with it. And This knife is an amazing chopper. Uh worked really well and then it disappeared it's nice and thick quarter inch stock uh, so I'd imagine it'd hold up for a while anyway but again I don't use this for anything I haven't used it it's uh, I mean the camera is not going to do it any justice but if you could actually hold it in your hands and look at it you would see there are absolutely no scratches on it because it hasn't been used for anything I just, I, I keep it because I like it. But the reason I showed this is because it's another tactical, for, or another tactical option. Uh, you could still use this as a chopper. I wouldn't chop a tree down with it, but you could chop up one inch diameter sticks really easily with this thing. It is sliced right through it. At least the other one did. Uh, these things were actually used... Now, I don't know which country, but I do know it was in Asia. Uh, they used these in World War I for uh, defense. These are usually used as like machete-type things, chopping down bamboo and things like that. But in a pinch, they used them to uh, protect themselves. So, anyway... Um, the next video I'm going to do, uh, and I'm going to do it right back to back, uh, I'm sitting in a place in Oregon, I'm getting ready to do my 10 hour reset, well, I already started that, I don't have any internet service out here, so I, I can't watch any videos, I can't do anything else, so I'm just going to make videos, so the next one's coming right up, um, but of course by the time I get them edited and get them posted online there might be a few days in between but the next one's coming up and it will be the second c combustion i just usually refer to it as fire so stay tuned